Hey everyone, mango 7 roll here. How we doing today? Welcome to another episode of Epic 7, and today is a massive one. We have a bunch of stuff. We have two new characters. We have EEs, which I already talked about in another video. Go check that out. And most importantly, we have two new characters, so let's get going. Uh, and before we get going, this video is late because the time got bopped from 2 a.m. to 5 a.m., so I had to wait up. It's now 5.30 a.m. And speaking of things that got bopped, did you ever get bopped as a kid like I did in Dragon Quest? Well, now's the time to turn that around with Dragon Quest Tact, which you can download in the link description below for free on Android and iOS. This is just a nostalgic trip of amazingness. And the reason why you're not going to be getting bopped as hard is because you're getting to use the monsters yourself in this game. We've got some of my monsters running around in the background. We also have my hero right here. But the cool part that you should care about is the first anniversary. We've got a thank you in the background there. That's me thanking you for downloading this game. We also have the first special mission. This is going to give you an iridescent orb. You've also got a hundred flipping scouts. You get 10 scouts a day for 10 days just by logging in. Absolutely an insane way to start and it's going to help you clear a bunch of stuff and you're going to be able to level them up faster with these campaign bonuses. And these beginner missions are going to be a joke with all the scouts. You had a hundred of them, you're going to get something good. And while you're doing these, you have uh, 16 missions to complete. And when you complete them, you're going to be able to get an either Dark Lord or a Hero meeting ticket. Just easy. And speaking of scouts, if we click into that here, we have Nocturnus. One of the most powerful monsters in all of Dragon Quest Tact. And I believe the most powerful hidden boss in Dragon Quest VI as well, which is just fantastic. So do what you got to do to try to get this Nocturnus. Scout them every day if you can while you're scouting those other free things. I'm just stoked for that. Download Dragon Quest Tact for free on Android and iOS in the link description below and then let me know in the comments what you pulled because I've pulled her so far and I bet you can't beat that because she is flipping amazing. Okay seriously the game has been really fun. I've been really enjoying the uh, Dragon Quest Tact experience. Download down there in the link description below. I'm also going to be doing a giveaway for a little gacha box uh, like an actual box of physical uh, stuff. And there's going to be way more information on that on Twitter in the next couple days. Actually, probably later today. So make sure you've got me followed on Twitter too. I've got four or five of them to give away. And uh, there's going to be a pretty good chance you win one because not everybody has Twitter. So get on that while you can. So now let's get into this, what we actually want to see here. And the most important part are the two videos. So let's start with, uh, let's start with Sermia first. Spoiler alert. Die on the battlefield or conquer the world. It's a 50-50 shot. Are you ready to bet it all on the gamble of a lifetime? Thighs. A lion never relents. No matter how small its prey. I was born to be a hero. By my destiny, I will cut you down. Okay, so... Lionheart Sermia is here, Shramile VA, absolutely amazing character design, everything. I love her outfit. I'm just really, really excited for her. And we'll talk about her skills in just a second. I just want to knock the videos out of the way because I just want to watch this other one really quickly too. Um, we can also see that her face animations are just so cool. Like if we take a look, I think they have her sitting too, which is super cute at the end. Look her with the coin. Bad. I love it. I love it. Okay. Now the one I am over the moon excited for. Was not expecting this. May you be punished by our grave. Love it. New rules are built on the blood of the preceding era. Absolutely insane. So this is Pyra, Pera. Well, we're not quite sure. They uh, clarified it on stream, but I still didn't quite get it. Voiced by uh, Gianni Tirado, who is the voice of, I think, Byleth from Fire Emblem Heroes. Also the voice of Rose and Arrowell and maybe uh, some other people too, uh, which is pretty exciting. So this is good. <laughs> Take a look at her. I'm so excited. She looks so cool. So cool, look at her faces. Look at how she sits. I'm gonna try to triple S her, I think, and waste all my bookmarks like I said I would never do again. So, now that we've got that out of the way, the quote is, of course, 
uh, Lionheart there. Go get your stuff. So let's take a look at stuff. So we've got uh, ML Sermia top left, uh, Pyra in the top right, and the bottom left. And then we have the three EEs. Again, I've talked about those already. Let's jump into the skills here. Because boy, they're something else. Uh, we were expecting a light warrior with Sermia. Actually, I was expecting a dark warrior. Uh, she would look very much like a dark warrior. But what we weren't expecting was a 30% ER base with 112 speed, tons of defense, uh, pretty middling HP, pretty middling attack, and uh, self imprint of the whale imprint, which is 17% crit chance, which is bonkers for anybody that does damage. It saves you so, so, so much gear in all of your equipment and then she scales with defense which is kind of interesting so it's far from over is her skill two and what it does is gains 40 fighting spirit at the start of the first battle and after an ally suffers an extra attack a dual attack a counter attack it dispels all debuffs inflicted on herself and activates shine uh can only be activated once every three turns here and shine emits light increasing her defense and effect resistance of the caster for two turns and gains 50 fighting spirit so this puts her up to 90 fighting spirit also gives her 80 percent base er which means you're very you're very unlikely to get hit by too many things that aren't actual dedicated debuffers especially if you have a little bit more er on your gear uh so yeah people were not very happy about the er but i don't think it's as bad as they uh expected like it's obviously not perfect there are better things you could do with that but it is still pretty good uh so next up, we have our skill three here, and this is Lionheart Sermia. I am the victor. So I am the victor, attacks all enemies with the sword storm, grants an extra turn, because why not just give everybody an extra turn, spoiler alert, in this entire game now. Um, and it penetrates the target's defense by 50% and proportionate to her defense. So she's a defense scaling bruiser slash DPS. She also has... Uh, 50% defense pen AoE. So I did see the future back in 2019 or 2020 with Sermia being AoE uh, and defense scaling, which is pretty nuts, right? And then her skill... Oh, by the way, of course, an extra turn, right? And then she gets to go again with Can You Handle the Heat? And uh, to note, she will be able to use this turn one if anybody gets a dual attack, counter attack, or anything like that, right? So um, she'll have 90 fighting spirit to be able to use this, and then she'll go with her turn one, giving her up to 30. So pretty insane here. Increases the speed of the caster for one turn on a skill one is pretty fantastic. And pretty much every single one of her uh, upgrades is just pure damage outside of her skill two, which has one turn cooldown on it. So... Uh, pretty fun character. I'm pretty excited for this. I'm absolutely going to summon. No idea if she's going to be insane or not. Uh, one thing to note is if you do not proc your Far From Over on your first turn, you're not going to be able to do any skill three shenanigans, right? You're not going to have enough. You'll just be sitting there at 40 fighting spirit. And even if you're on like a counter set, uh, you're still not going to have enough with a counter set proc. So that's one thing to notice with her kit. You're going to have to really be careful about that because if you bring her into situations where um, there's not a counter attack, dual attack, uh, or extra attack, then there's problems, right? Uh, so keep that in mind too. And uh, yeah, people with ignore defense like Briolet and Landy are probably going to decimate her as well. Um, so keep that in mind. A lot of people say Riolet sucks and maybe I'll get angry comments about this, but I think Riolet's still in a fantastic spot. He's not OP, but he's still really good for what he does and you can fit him into different situations. And somebody like Riolet is probably going to tear apart somebody like this, especially... Um, no, especially, just probably. And then <laughs> Pyra here, uh, who I'm unbelievably stoked for. Again, voiced by Gianni uh, Torado. And we have some stats. So, of course, we have 128 speed. So, obviously, going to be an opener. I'm pretty much expecting a new character in the next month or two that's going to have like 131 speed. I, I feel like they're pushing this 128 on basically like every third character now. It, it feels like, anyway. So they're probably going to have to go a little bit further sometime, and I expect that soon. Um, she's also got pretty decent attack, pretty low HP, and abysmally low defense, so she's not going to be too tanky, but she's going to be, which is kind of cool at the same time. She also has 18% base effectiveness here and 27 from her self imprint, bringing her up to 45%, which is pretty fantastic just for a base uh, effectiveness build. 
We also have Punishing Blade. This is her skill two, and this attacks all enemies with Guardian Spirit, so this will uh, do damage, of course. Decreases buff durations by one turn before restricting and making them unable to be buffed for two turns. Grants the uh, an extra turn to the caster. Again, let's just give everybody an extra turn. And I want to actually go back to Piera's video here because um, I think they really showcased why they built her like this in the video. So let me just go like this and uh, take a look at her skill three here. Yeah, right here, right here. So this is pretty much or her skill two, right? Okay, so no damage, but obviously restricts here and unable to be buffed, uh, which makes that do nothing, right? Like you can tell that's why they built her like this. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind. If you're having problems with AOL, this is probably going to be a pretty decent way to handle it, especially with the 128 speed. Um, and of course, an extra turn. And what does she do after an extra turn? Well, she buffs everybody up with attack, which is kind of insane. Uh, except for herself, of course. And then she does some pretty unique things here. One, she's going to stealth, which uh, reduces her AOE damage taken, I believe. I don't know by how much. Also, she's going to Escort, which makes it so she takes 30% of the damage the other team takes, or your, the rest of your team takes, and she's going to Barrier herself. So basically, she's going to Taunt, essentially. Not Taunt, but like, just Aureus up while defending herself, right? Like, giving her the Stealth Reduction, giving her the Barrier. I'm not sure how the Stealth Reduction combines with uh, the damage taken from other people. I'm not sure how that uh, interacts with each other when the damage reduction is uh, put in, let me know in the comments below before. And of course, barrier strength increases proportion to the caster's level, which is kind of awkward. Uh, it basically means it doesn't scale with anything. You just kind of get her to level 60 and it's always the same. So kind of interested to see how much that barrier actually does. So uh, pretty nuts so that she does this. Uh, absolutely pretty nuts so. And it's a four turn cooldown here and a five turn cooldown on her skill. Uh, skill two but her skill two does give her an extra turn so like they're basically both four-ish turn cooldowns and then we have her skill one which is a 40 percent chance to stun for one turn and when she's got a barrier which she does after she buffs herself uh, effect chance increases up to 65 percent and that's a lot and of course you can solar burn as well for a hundred percent chance and uh, this does not ignore ER, but she does have really high effectiveness. So you're basically just going to have to hit that 50%. Um, and it's 10 souls. This is actually bonkers. This is really, 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 really insane. Imagine if you're using Meg Chloe and uh, she had infinite effectiveness to land everything. And instead of taking an extra turn, she just guaranteed stun someone. Like that's insane for 10 souls. This is, this is going to be really, really, really good for her kit and it's actually like what I'm most excited about. I love just bopping people and stunning them. Uh, so I'm super excited for that. And then we have her wonderful art right there uh, with Goblet of Oath. And this brings 30% uh, effectiveness when it's maxed. Also, when you use a non-attack skill, it decreases skill cooldowns by one turn and only activated three times per battle, which is kind of just weird, but it is what it is. Uh, the cool thing about this is with the four turn cooldowns, you can... Um, start off with your AoE attack, you'll take an extra turn, then you'll use your skill 3, which is a non-attack skill, you'll decrease the skill cooldown of both of them, um, and that's pretty sweet, right? You'll be able to cycle through that so much faster. Uh, and the other thing too is she can use a bunch of other artifacts. She is a thief, right? So you can use something like um, uh, RNL probably is what I'll end up using. There's also stuff like uh, Dust Devil you can use too, and imagine with Dust Devil you've got the 65% chance to stun, you're going to stun somebody, right? Uh, but I think I would personally go with Goblet of Oath just because you're going to want this effectiveness anyway. Um, maybe RNL, but I don't think I would go Dust Devil. RNL would be more explosive. This would be more consistent while also giving you the effectiveness you need. So I'm really excited for this. Uh, and it's not out this week, but next week, I believe. We also have the Mystic Summon Rotation, watch a Shuri and Lionheart Sermia. Look at how elegant she looks. I love it so much. And then we have the final thing here, which I still can't see, the Coin Shop Rotation, Judge Kisei, Arc Demon Shadow, and uh, Lilius and Ray here. So that is it for today. There's a boatload of stuff. I just want to remind everybody, try out Dragon Quest Hacked. 
Uh, link description below. You can get it for free on Android and iOS. Their one-year anniversary is massive. I'm also going to be giving away some Dragon Quest Tact merch on Twitter, which I'll post about in the next couple days. Link description below again for my Twitter, and just look out for that tweet there. It's going to be really easy to win because there's not going to be too many people on my Twitter. It's not super active, so get in there and get your stuff. So thank you so much for watching. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe as always, and I'll talk to you all later. Bye, everybody.